like to invite the third speaker. And the third speaker now in this session is Commander Paris Pant. He'll be speaking about the requir naval requirements. Commander Paris Pant is an officer of the executive cadre uh, and is a specialized in naval gunnery and has served as on board on various naval ships for about 10 years. He has served as instructor at the gunnery school, Ines Dronacharya at Fort Kochi. So over to uh, Commander Paris Pan. Share my content, sir. The... It's not visible as yet. Yeah, thing is coming. Is the presentation uh, visible, sir? Yeah, it's visible. You can go in display mode. Full screen. Full screen, sir? Yeah, that's right. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Air Marshal uh, Shivasta, for the introduction, sir. Uh, respected Chair, distinguished guests, ladies and gen uh, gentlemen, I'm Commander Paras Pant, Commander Staff Requirements, at the Directorate of Staff Requirements at the Integrated Headquarters of Ministry of Defense, Navy, which oversees functioning of the quality requirements and undertaking procurement of weapons and sensors for the Navy, including night vision and electro optical equipment. Over the course of the next 15 minutes, I would provide an overview of Indian Navy's requirements of night vision and electro optical devices. The scope of the presentation is as shown on the screen. Naval warfare is essentially one of the purest forms of maneuver warfare. There are no static defenses or lines. lines. Commanders maneuver formations of ships and aircrafts, including submarines, into positions of advantage. To this, they rely on speed, endurance, reconnaissance, early detection and identification of enemy. At sea, it is common for enemy ships to take tactical advantage of the global common sea routes and blend in with ships of neutral countries and merchant shipping. However, once identified, the commanders use surprise and longer range of weapons to annihilate the animal, anim, enemy platform. Consistent with precise battle space awareness is an essential requirement for naval forces. The ability to locate and destroy high value and mobile targets at sea with high degree of confidence is the bigger challenge. The Indian Navy must therefore be able to operate in any kind of environment during day or at night or any kind of weather condition. Therefore, the positive identification of any platform prior to engagement is critical to attain precise targeting and avoid collateral damage and has to be resorted to a standoff ranges. If good visibility enables positive identification by day, this advantage cannot be lost at night. Night fighting capabilities are very well established in the form of radars on board Indian naval ships. But it is to be understood that radars suffer from inherent design limitations. The weight and size, jamming, detection based on radar's cross section, and the target, and most importantly, active emission makes the technology extremely vulnerable for use in tactical environment. Radars are also susceptible to multipath errors, amongst other errors that make accurate targeting at close ranges difficult. Considering detection and identification of potential surface targets by night as one of the primary tasks of any naval platform, Indian Navy has integrated various emerging passive technologies to gain new night fighting capabilities. The introduction of night vision and electro optical systems on board naval platforms and application of the same by special forces has aided naval warfare tactics. The night vision and electro-optical systems are capable of target detection, tracking, engagement in all forms of naval warfare. The electro-optical system undertakes, undertakes passive search, detection, recognition, classification, and tracking of surface, coastal, and air targets. The key requirement of the system includes its ability to operate in marine environment under all weather conditions. The performance of the system should not be not get greatly affected by special propagation condition in terms of scattering, absorption, and contrast. The system should provide 360-degree coverage, 
should be stabilized for roll and pitch yaw and be tested to withstand the harsh marine environment. The system should also be compatible with shipboard combat management systems for generating targeting solution for weapons. Most primarily, the system should be capable to detect and classify objects varying from small craft to a submarine periscope to an incoming missile. The system, therefore, should be a multispectral device for assured performance under all conditions of propagation and target characteristics and have an integrated laser range finder to assess the range of a target. Applicability of electro-optical technology, therefore, is applicable for all forms of naval warfare as flashed on the screen. The next part of my presentation will amplify on shipborne, airborne, and special operation applications of this equipment. The applicability of this equipment on board ship ranges from the use of technology for classification of contacts in busy sea lanes, closer to land, at harbor anchorages, and operations in littoral waters with engagement capability by medium range and close range weapon systems. The inventory of equipment on board Indian naval ships ranges from radars with inbuilt electro optical infrared sensors to electro optical turrets, night vision binoculars, and thermal imaging infrared sights. The targeting devices include electro optical sights, which are interfaced with guns so as to provide targeting information for carrying out attacks using anti shipping missiles, rockets, and machine guns. Shipborne electro optical systems assist the operator on board ship in classification of target at night for further engagement by medium range close range weapon systems. Indian Navy presently has a plethora of Indian and foreign OEM equipment like the indigenous E-151, the SOP which are manufactured by Bell to the imported EOD, electro-optical device, Bagheera, EOIRST which is an electro-optical infrared search and track system and the latest a quadcopter with integrated electro opticals, electro optics, which are used, being used for classification and further targeting by medium and close range weapon system fitted on board Indian naval ships. Further, night vision devices like night vision binoculars, thermal image sensors, thermal contrast sensors, close circuit televisions, infrared sights are also being used on board Indian naval ships and submarines extensively for detection of enemy divers and saboteurs in harbor as well as anchorage as well as locating suspicious floating objects and during night visual board and search and seizure operations. In the same way that advanced naval radars have begun using fixed array antenna rather than the more traditional rotating array, uh, array electro optical infrared systems have also begun using multiple fixed arrays housed in a uh, fixed or stabilized sensor head. The electro-optical infrared systems are being integrated with active phased array radars into the integrated mast in the latest warships. Detection and identification of potential surface targets by night is one of the primary tasks for naval aircraft by night. The requirement is to detect the targets without giving away your own position. The dynamics of using this equipment on an aircraft is different by virtue of it being fast moving platform with the rapid rate of change in target bearing and range. The challenge of precision strike from standoff ranges is yet another challenge. The above challenges are superimposed in naval environment with flying over sea and night operations on an aircraft from a moving deck. The key attributes of an airborne system should have minimal user interface, an optimized tactical display for pilot, streaming of video over data link, and image fusion, and airborne aided target designation. Night surveillance devices on aircraft also use night vision goggles, compatible landing aids for ships, including night vision goggles, light, lighting assisted by other aids such as homing beacons, data link, including helmet now mount night vision goggles. Generation 3 for pilots. The design sensor should therefore enable passive detection by the use of forward looking infrared and should also aid the pilot in night orientation during low level flying. Special forces 
could be employed for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, which are known as ISR missions. In hostile territory behind enemy lines in, or, in order to penetrate the fog of war and obtain reliable information with respect to targeting data for carrying out precise offensive strikes. Special operations are mostly carried out under the cover of darkness and in low visibility conditions and necessitate the use of robust and reliable night vision devices. The peculiarity of marine environment with respect to these night sites is that they should be splash proof, moisture resistant, adapted to saline environment, and shock resistant, predator friendly, and hands free, that is, helmet or weapon mounted. Additionally, the use of these sites in combat freefall should cater for rapid changes in pressure and temperature. The night vision devices currently held with the special forces include thermal images, binoculars, with compass and range finders and night vision sites, which could be either weapon or helmet mounted. Peripheral night vision night vision devices should be helmet mounted with four tube or four eyepiece configuration so as to provide a better field of view of at least 97 degrees. Presently, the twin tube twin tubes have a field of vision of only 40, 47 degrees. Additionally, night vision binoculars should have feature of auto gating and white phosphorus display. With regards to night vision monoculars, it provides night vision capability to a single eye while also retaining ocular vision on the other eye. This allows the operator to instantly focus attention on target in both normal and low visibility conditions. The requirement of these devices is for generation three and above. To conclude, the positive identification of any platform prior to engagement is critical to attain precise targeting and avoid collateral damage and has to be resorted to as standoff ranges. Thus, if good visibility enables positive identification by day, this advantage cannot be lost by night. Consequently, there are large scope for these technologies in all domains which are air, land and sea. The challenges of naval operations demand development of technologies that remain ahead of the curve. For the course of the Navy is steady on leapfrogging rather than tail chasing, research and development and inducting cutting edge technologies and innovation. Concurrently, indianization in electro-optical and infrared technologies in, is an unwavering long-term target with impetus and impactful outcomes in pursuance of self-reliance and eventually self-sufficiency.